welcome to my youtube channel today we are going to talk about international consensus classification 2022 on mds myelodysplastic syndromes are clonal hematopoietic neoplasms which are characterized by persistent unexplained cytopenia morphological dysplasia and the propensity to progress to bone marrow failure are acute myeloid leukemia the threshold for defining dysplasia remains the same as 10% cut off for all lineages micro mega karyocytes are the most specific indicator of mds for mega karyocytic lineage mds is clonal in almost all cases somatic genetic aberration Uh, is detected in approximately 90% of cases of MDS by NGS and in approximately 50% of cases by conventional karyotyping in cases with no clonality proven by current testing methods like NGS and karyotyping a diagnosis of MDS can still be made in the presence of dysplasia and persistent cytopenia pre malignant clonal cytopenias and myelodysplastic syndromes is a category uh, under international consensus classification 2022 which includes clonal cytopenia of undetermined uh, significance mds with mutated sf3b1 mds with deletion 5q mds with mutated tp53 mds nos under which we have three categories nos without dysplasia with single linear dysplasia with multi linear dysplasia mds with excess blas in pediatric patients mds aml mds aml with mutated tp53 mds aml with myelodysplasia related gene mutations mds aml with myelodysplasia related cytogenetic abnormalities mds aml and nos MDS defining cytogenetic abnormalities in cytopenic patients without dysplasia can be considered as clonal cytopenia of undetermined significance the exceptions for MDS defining cytogenetic abnormalities are deletion 5q monosomy 7 deletion 7q or a complex karyotype other than these cytogenetic abnormalities Uh, the other cytogenetic abnormalities in cytogenic patients like trisomy 8 loss of y chromosome deletion 12p etc without dysplasia can be categorized as clonal cytopenia of undetermined significance as i said in the previous slide these are the exceptions deletion 5q monosomy 7 deletion 7q or complex karyotype uh, and tp53 mutation so in cytopenic patients even if there is no dysplasia or excess blast presence of these uh, genetic abnormalities which will will characterize will categorize uh, patients into MDS with deletion 5q MDS with mutated tp53 MDS and OIS respectively Seekers aplastic anemia PNH and Vexas these are the pre malignant clonal cytopenias which can progress to MDS Vexas stands for vacuoles in the erythroid or myeloid series even enzyme x linked auto inflammatory somatic syndrome which basically is due to somatic mutations in uba1 gene and severe adult onset auto inflammatory disease so uba1 is major even enzyme that initiates ubiquitination MDS with ring sideroblast has been replaced by MDS with SF3B1 mutation but 
SF3B1 unmutated MDS ring sideroblast cases have clinical features and outcomes similar to MDS with single or multilinear dysplasia. So they are classified as MDS envoys irrespective of the number of ring sideroblasts. So ring sideroblasts uh, with SF3B1 mutation uh, only uh, will be uh, categorized as MDS with SF3B1 mutation. If there is no SF3B1 mutation, uh, you should simply call uh, the case as MDS envoys irrespective of the number of or percentage of ring sideroblasts. So, uh, neither dysplasia nor ring sideroblasts are required to diagnose MDS SF3B1 mutation except for the uh, presence of SF3B1 mutation, uh, dysplasia and ring sideroblasts uh, does not matter for the diagnosis of this entity. MDS AML is a new category uh, which is used for MDS excess blast 2 in adults. Whereas uh, in pediatric population that is less than 18 years, MDS excess blast will continue to include patients with 10 to 19 percent blast. MDS AML category is not applicable for pediatric patients. It can only be uh, said in adult uh, population because the biology of the uh, childhood MDS is different from adult MDS. Refractory cytopenia of childhood uh, is included in a new section of pediatric disorders, so it is not discussed under MDS. Monoallelic versus multi-hit TP53. Monoallelic TP53 mutations in MDS have a less adverse effect on prognosis and the biology is also different from cases with multi-hit TP53. So, uh, monoallelic TP53 mutations are not included in the MDS with mutated TP53 category. But monoallelic mutated TP53 ML uh, can be uh, categorized as uh, MDS AML with mutated TP53 or AML with mutated TP53 because in both the scenarios even monoallelic TP53 carries poor prognosis. Myeloid neoplasms with mutated TP53 is a broad category uh, in uh, International Consensus Classification. So, this includes uh, three subtypes MDS with mutated TP53, MDS AML with mutated TP53, AML with mutated TP53. This is a biological continuum. MDS uh, progressed to AML, but there is an intermediate phase where MDS AML uh, the disease exists. That's why it has been defined uh, as a separate entity in the uh, new classification. So, MDS with mutated TP53, uh, the blast percentage is 0 to 9 percent both in bone and uh, bone marrow and uh, in the peripheral blood. MDS AML, the blast percentage should be 10 to 19 percent uh, both in the bone marrow as well as peripheral blood. AML as you know more than or equal to 20% uh, blast in the marrow and peripheral blood. This category uh, pure erythral leukemia uh, will also come under uh, AML with mutated TP53 if uh, these cases carry a mutated uh, TP53. So, MDS with mutated TP53 uh, should have a multi-hit TP53 mutation. That means two distinct uh, TP53 mutations, each uh, having a variant allele allelic frequency of more than 10% or a single TP53 mutation with either 17p deletion on cytogenetics or a WAF of more than 50% or copy neutral loss of heterozygosity at the 17p TP53 locus. 
so two alleles should get affected either it can be uh, demonstrated by ngs uh, or by cytogenetics if the waf is more than 10% uh, and uh, associated complex karyotype with loss of 17p uh, this can also be called as uh, mds with mutated tp53 either there should be two distinct tp53 mutations either a single tp53 mutation uh, in combination with 17p deletion and cytogenetics for mds aml uh, any and a mds aml and aml with mutated tp53 the criteria is same any somatic TP3 mutation with more than 10% uh, WAF is sufficient for the diagnosis of these two categories. Uh, as I said, uh, monoallelic TP53 is uh, less adverse. So, uh, MDS with mutated TP53 always represents multi-hit TP53 mutation only. MDS can be uh, developed in the setting of germline uh, predispos predisposition also. So, whenever uh, there is uh, germline predisposition uh, which, uh, which is associated with new or progressive cytopenia in the setting of rising marrow cellularity that is hypercellular marrow and multilinear dysplasia, increased blast and are acquired pathogenic uh, genetic alterations. So, with the uh, development of uh, dysplasia and increased blast and acquired pathogenic uh, genetic alterations, germline uh, mutations can also, uh, germline mutations in the bone marrow failure syndromes can also lead to myelodysplastic syndrome. Emergence of deletion 5q, monosomy 7, deletion 7q, or complex karyotype, or multi hit TP53 mutations, or SF3B1 mutation, all these are considered as MDS defining in a known case of uh, patient with germline uh, mutations which leads to myeloid malignancies. This uh, germline predisposition syndromes will be discussed later in the next uh, classes. So, these uh, germline mutations can also progress to MDS. So, emergence of deletion 5q, monosomy 7, deletion 7q, complex karyotype, multi TP53 mutations in a known case of uh, patient with germline uh, predisposition to mild malignancy. So, all these can lead to MDS. These are the MDS defining uh, genetic abnormalities. So, these are the entities uh, which uh, have been enlisted. MDS with mutated SF3B1, uh, more than or equal to 1 dysplastic lineages uh, will be there, more than uh, or equal to 1 uh, uh, cytopenia in any of the lineage and uh, blast percentage in all of these is uh, less than 5% uh, blast in the bone marrow and less than 2% blast in the peripheral blood. So, all these uh, categories come under uh, low risk MDS, MDS with mutated SF3B1, MDS with deletion 5Q and MDS NOS. These three categories come under uh, low risk MDS. MDS NOS uh, is again divided into uh, MDS NOS without dysplasia. MDS NOS with single linear dysplasia, MDS NOS with multi linear dysplasia based on the uh, lineages uh, which show dysplasia. But the blast percentage uh, remains the same. But uh, NOS category should not have uh, TP53 mutation and SF3V1 mutation. Uh, MDS with deletion 5Q category should not have uh, TP53 mutation. Whereas MDS with mutated SF3B1 uh, category uh, should not have TP53 or RANGS1 mutation. There should be only SF3B1 mutation with other mutations other than TP53 and RANGS1 can be there. But the WAF tough is more than or equal to 10%.
MDS with excess blast is uh, retained uh, for only pediatric patients. In adults, uh, MDS with excess blast, blast uh, this category is replaced uh, with MDS AML. So, MDS AML is confined to adult MDS and MDS uh, with excess blast is confined to uh, pediatric uh, MDS. MDS AML, as I said earlier, the blast percentage is 10 to 19 percent, both in the peripheral blade or bone marrow. So, to summarize, there are no uh, changes in MDS with isolation, isolated deletion 5Q category, but there is no uh, MDS unclassifiable category which has been eliminated. Uh, Instead, there is a new category uh, called MDS with uh, multi-heat TP53 and the classification of lower risk MDS has uh, thus been simplified into three subtypes, two defined uh, mainly by genetic features like SF3B1 mutation and deletion 5Q and the remaining uh, ones come under MDS NOS. MDS with excess blast has been replaced with the term MDS AML category. Refractory cytopenia of childhood uh, now comes under pediatric disorders. So, oh, it has been eliminated from the MDS classification. Thank you.